So with Harley Quinn so popular these days, I thought it was going to be fun to take a look at where Harley comes from uh, and see if I could find a drink in there that's worth crafting. Today, uh, I guess I'm the Knight or Vengeance or whatever, I'm going to talk about Batman the Animated Series. Kind of a 90s nostalgia kick for me. Let's do it. <laughs> Batman the Animated Series premiered in 1992, so um, it premiered a few years after Burton's 1989 Batman film, and the same year that Burton's Batman Returns comes out. It is worth taking a moment here to note just how wildly different the pop culture landscape was at that time, because before 1989, Batman had not been on screen, I don't think, since the 1960s TV series. Holy understatements, Batman. There were some 70s, 80s superhero TV adaptations of things like Wonder Woman and the Hulk, and I guess there was a Spider-Man one. Um, and there's always, of course, America's Greatest Hero. But it was a far cry from the state of entertainment today, uh, where you have the MCU and everything like that, and that basically comic books are everywhere. It's all comic book movies. It's the only movies that exist are comic book movies, apparently. Although I think that that is starting to wind down. When I was a kid and Batman the Animated Series premiered, I'd assumed it was a loose adaptation designed to capitalize on the success of the Burton films, which, of course, I was obsessed with. But actually, the animated series had been in development alongside and maybe even before the first Batman film. Um, they did end up taking some visual cues from Burton's style, mainly his sense of timelessness. You know, you can't say exactly when Burton's Gotham is happening, what time of frame that is. It is outside of time. But then they even went further with it, and they developed a look that the showrunners dubbed Dark Deco. And that's actually, Dark Deco is a thing that, I mean, it's a, it's a concept now at this point, like kind of like steampunk or something, or cyberpunk. Like, Dark Deco is a... A thing. Dark Deco pulled stylistic cues from across the 20th century, though mainly the 30s, without ever pegging Batman the Animated Series down to a specific time frame. So you've got police uh, zeppelins and computers uh, kind of running side by side. I don't want to do a super deep dive on Batman the Animated Series because that's not really the focus of what I'm doing here, but I do feel like I would be remiss if I did not point out what a groundbreaking show this was. Um, it's still regarded as amongst the greatest animated series ever made. Um, I think that it's safe to say that like, without Batman the Animated Series, there's a number of shows that, and things that simply would not have happened, right? Like there would not have been, I think a whole suite of Warner Brothers animated shows that fall on its heel, heels could not have happened. Um, I think it's very possible that the Marvel Cinematic Universe couldn't have happened, to be honest. I mean, you know, that those seeds were getting planted and they percolated, right? A Batman the Animated Series was ostensibly a kid's show, uh, but it was literally as mature a kid's show as they could get away with making. Because they were routinely pushed back by network censors, meaning they had gone too far, <laughs> and then they had to come back into line. Showrunner Paul Dini's standing rule was uh, regarding the censors was to always adhere exactly to the letter of the censors' requests, but have the end result be more disturbing so that, you know, kind of uh, make them be sorry for what you wished for here, guys. Uh, and let me tell you, as a kid, I really appreciated that, that this was a show that simply did not talk down to you. It did everything it could to be as real as possible within the confines of an animated world populated by people like Clayface and Killer Croc. Having come off of the heels of being a G.I. Joe fan until I realized they're really not trying to hit each other here, are they? Of course, now that I'm a grown-up with kids of my own, um, I do kind of think that pushing boundaries to make your kids' show as disturbing as humanly possible might be a bit weird. But, um, kid in me! Thank you, Paul. You are one of the many, many reasons that I'm a, I'm a weirdo. Uh, probably. Like everybody on this dying planet, I don't get all of the nutrients or oxygen or sunshine or things that I need to live. Uh, the other stuff is not going to fit in a bottle, but Ritual can help on the nutrients, which is well, that's something, right? <laughs> and I do love Ritual, by the way, and here's some reasons why. Uh, first off, I don't need to go to the pharmacy and look and see if is this vitamin D or that vitamin D the one I wanted? Uh, is this brand or that brand the right one for me? That's all sorted, right? It's just, it's Ritual. It just comes in the mail. Secondly, these little dudes are about as environmentally friendly as you can get. It's uh, entirely recycled material for the bottles. It is uh, all vegan ingredients, which actually matters a lot. Uh, it's even plant-based inks for the, for the bottles, which is really huge. That actually matters to me. That's the thing that I'm concerned about, but I don't know about you. 
Probably my favorite thing about Ritual, though, is that it gets delivered to my door. I'm a pretty forgetful guy. I'm always running out of things, particularly my vitamins. It shows up uh, every 30 days, and boom, it, I don't think about it. It's it's like a ritual. It's a, that's what the idea, it becomes a ritual. I take the Essential for Men daily. It's got all the stuff in it that I was looking for. It's got uh, vitamin A, D, omega-3, zinc, you know, good stuff. One thing they do that is super neat is they put these little uh, fresh mint tabs in the bottle. Makes them fresh and minty, like a breath mint, which I actually, I really like that. I like that a lot. Uh, even if sometimes I, I forget and then I take these with my morning coffee, uh, which is a mistake because it, the mint with the coffee is a bad idea. Maybe I just should not wash down my, my morning vitamins with um, coffee. Anyway, it's only a dollar a day to get 10 high quality nutrients delivered straight to your door and just never have to run out of vitamins again. And better yet, right now, Ritual is offering 10% off your first three months if you go to ritual.com slash HTD10 and use code HTD10 at checkout. Okay, back to the show. In addition to being a massive shot in the arm for Warner Animation and animation in general, and of course DC Comics, the beloved character of Harley Quinn was invented for Batman the Animated Series. She was originally intended to be a one-shot character, but a combination of fan reception and really enjoying writing for her made her a permanent fixture on the show. The show, Batman the Animated Series, was super good at fleshing out Batman's villains and giving them worthwhile, heavy, tragic backstories, which to my mind serves to make Batman all the more a sociopathic monster, but I digress and infuriate the internet. And particularly in like the case of Mr. Freeze and of course Harley Quinn, Batman's response to everything. You are a victim of circumstances and of uh, a crumbling social structure. Let me beat the crap out of you and throw you into the worst prison slash mental asylum I can find. That's great. That's great. Anyway, so Harley was so popular that DC wound up picking her up from the animated series and folding her into Batman canon. And the rest is history. <laughs> Except this leaves me without a drink. And that's a problem for how to drink. Um, for that, I need to look at Harley's one true love. Hi, Puddin! You're just in time to see the... <laughs> no, not the... Joker? He's an abusive piece of shit. I'm talking about Poison Ivy, that misunderstood ecologist and general do-gooder. This little rose would be extinct today if I hadn't saved my precious from those horrible bulldozers. And in just in case you think that certainly the Harley and Ivy thing is some modern fan service or shipping or whatever, because obviously a kid's cartoon from 1992 would never portray that kind of same-sex relationship, you would be very, very wrong. Please, please, please. <laughs> Nope, their relationship was there from the beginning. Uh, it's currently being further explored in a parody non-canon series on HBO Max. Where also, by the way, you could be watching Batman the Animated Series if you wanted to. So today, it's still spring here. Flowers, trees, birds, and Mother Nature's wrath are all in play. So I'm gonna make Poison Ivy's Demetrite. Ivy makes this stuff called Demetrite and opens up a very exclusive, very private, invitation-only spa where Gotham City's most elite can be pampered and indulged and rejuvenated to their eternal youth. Ivy makes sure to only invite the scummiest of scumbags, like Bruce Wayne, for example, whose company has been slashing and burning the Amazon. Technically, Bruce didn't know, but I mean, come on, it's your job to know. Only Bruce, he didn't feel like going, and instead offered his invite to his faithful, overworked butler, Alfred, who desperately needed a vacation. Uh, and if not for that, actually, Ivy probably would have succeeded in making the world a much better place by turning a bunch of bastards into trees. Uh, which is obviously what Demetrite does. We're talking about Poison Ivy, Batman here. Come on, obviously. I coated my outfit with an herbicidal antidote. Oh well, Batman wins again. Kisses! <laughs> anyway, Demetrite is this screen stuff, and she kind of douses Batman in it and makes him drink it, and now I want to drink it, because even though I hear it's going to turn me into a tree, the marketing about this stuff providing eternal youth is really loud, and that's all I care about, so pour it in me, lady plant woman. Plant mommy. Oh, don't say that on the internet, Greg. This is a shaken drink, so I will need my shaker thingy, and I'm going to start with about an inch of cucumber. Just an inch. I'm going to take, this is a real standard cucumber. So I'm gonna take about, you know, yay, yay's much cucumber. And I like the smell of that. That's a good smell. Cucumber is a nice smell. I remember when I was a kid, uh, I'm talking about middle school, maybe early high school here. All the gals were real into cucumber melon from Bath and Body Works at the mall. It's the smell of young love, guys. 
All right, then I'm just gonna take this and I'm, I, I said to myself, I will roughly chop the cucumber, but apparently I am geometrically julienning and cubing it. Um, why am I doing that? Because I really wanna get some cucumber flavor in here and the more surface area I give myself, the easier that'll be. It's just, you know, there's no reason not to. Dump that in the shaker. It might be wise to muddle here, which is actually what I'm going to do. Um, it would be particularly wise to muddle this if you don't have super heavy, solid, dense ice like I use, so let's muddle this. I'm just gonna smash that up. And then maybe, you know, on one hand you'd be like, hey, why do you have to slice it up if you're just gonna muddle it? Well, this makes it a lot easier to muddle. Um, trying to muddle a solid two inch section of cucumber probably would have come flying out of my shaker like a disaster. That helps, yeah. Then I want to announce a fresh lime juice. Then I need an ounce of Italicus, which has actually been coming up on the show quite a bit lately. Um, people kept complaining that I was barely ever using this stuff before, even though it sits right up here on the shelf, and that's because the bottle is pretty, guys. Uh, I do love it, though. It's delicious. Hopefully, between this and the recent other uses of the show, you were all uh, of it on the show, you're all very satisfied now. And by the way, if you're having trouble finding Italicus or any of the other bottles I use in the show, you should check out Cariata. There's a link in the pinned comment below. Um, currently, we're shipping to 28 states in the U.S., I think. Sorry if you're overseas or in Canada, which I think counts for like 80% of the U.S. population. So if you're in the U.S., odds are we can ship to you. So one ounce of Italicus, and that's drink.curiata.com, or the link in the pinned comment below for Curiata. One ounce of Italicus, there we go. And then we need an ounce of uh, Blanco tequila. Um, Fortaleza is one of my favorite tequilas, and that's what I'm going to use here, uh, Fortaleza Blanco an ounce. If you're playing the home game, you may have noticed that, yep, this is kind of a variation on a last word. Uh, right, and to finish that last word bit, we do need an ounce of green chartreuse. You know, those kinds of known quantities, like last words and sours and things and so on. And the last word is kind of a sour, kind of a sour. That kind of thing can be really useful when you're developing new cocktails. Honestly, it's a lot, a lot of my cocktails start out as I'm gonna take inspiration from something and work on it until it fits the thematic thing that I'm going for here, the flavor profile that I'm going for here. Maybe that's cheating. Maybe that's like too short of a too shortcut or something like that. But the truth of the matter is that like these proven ratios, even if I think you start from like a truly blank slate, you're gonna tend to wind up working your way back to something that resembles one of these anyway, so. Um, okay, everything's in there. So let's get some ice and shake this sucker up. Too big, one large, uncracked the other one we will shut up shut up the ice ice must shut up it's the freeze okay there we go ice is in there probably should have had a double strainer on this but i didn't grab one so i'll just do it without um strain that into a coupe i like this little i think it's called chipware that style Hexagon beehive thing. The beehive pattern kind of makes me think of plants, nature, spring, poison ivy. Perfect. There is a drink for a garnish. I'm gonna take a wheel of cucumber, put a notch in that, and some of these nice white flowers. I totally forget the name of these things. And that is. Poison Ivy's Demetrite. Uh, let's see how it is. What's a good toast here? Um, Death to Batman. Oh man, that is delicious. It's super refreshing. And it has a nice long evolution too. It has a very vegetal um, thing that runs all the way through it. A lot of cucumber in there. A lot of um, chartreuse is a loud flavor. Usually chartreuse expresses very black pepper. Here that's kind of muted. Other things are coming to the fore from the chartreuse, the other herbal components. Which herbs? I don't know. Hard to put my finger on. Overall, the drink is herbaceous. Um, and that's part of that, I think, too, is the italicus is bringing that out. The italicus, the citrus, the bergamot, that bitterness of bergamot, which is there, it is helping the chartreuse, I think this is what's happening, express one of its many flavors over another. But chartreuse is a very complicated spirit. <laughs> Balanced as well, by the way, I want to point out, not too sweet. Metallicus is really your sweetener here. It's not very sweet in face of all these other things. It's just right. This drink 
you would never, I don't think anybody's gonna say, oh, that's that's not sweet enough. I don't think anybody's gonna think it's too sweet either. It's, it's really um, just right. I would say it's a pretty dry cocktail without being, you know, overpowering or something like that. It's an easy to drink drink. The drink tastes green. It tastes green. That is a good way to describe it. I mean, it's like the, it tastes like the smell of walking through a beautiful garden in bloom. It has a great um, bracing quality. Something about the, the mild bitterness and the cold and the herbaceousness of it, I find it really opens the, opens the sinuses, which I, I is really nice. It's almost like it'd be a good, um, kind of a good eye-opener drink, sort of a good corpse survivor, you know? I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty pleased with the way this came out. <laughs> um, I think that this is a cocktail suit suitable for uh, its origins and namesake. Am I turning into a tree? No, does not make me into a tree. This is a good thing in my case. Is it granting me the powers of eternal youth? I'll let you be the judge. Sadly, sadly, no. My socials are as followed. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter, uh, both at a how to drink. I'm on Patreon at patreon.com slash how to drink, where you can see the parts of this episode that did not make the final cut. I'm on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Greg from HTD. Um, I have a second channel called H2D2, which is mostly about streaming. If you want to pick up a bottle of Italicus or anything else I'm using on the show, you could check out the link in the pinned comment below or check out um, drink.curiata.com. Both of those are great places to pick up uh, drinks from Curiata, bottles from Curiata, whom I'm partnered with and uh, very proud of, very excited about what's going on there. Until then, what are we going to do about the Batman? Oh, I've been making the show for a while. Why don't you check out one of these other episodes? <laughs>